I, how long ago was it? Uh, like a year and a half ago when we played in Thailand and I flew out there for the finals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember? That? Remember? Yeah. yeah. Like, went from 3-0-3 three, three, oh, three, and then you came. They were shook when yeah. you was about to come too, though. They was like, oh, uh, Taylor's coming out. He's, I was like, I know Taylor, man. <laughs> His man, I was I was not ready lucky. for five. On, I was playing three on three for so long, man. I was not ready for five on five. But I, you know, I tell people this story all the time. I was like, man, this dude is like a real pro. I went to the gym three hours before the game, three hours just to like mentally prepare, like see the court, kind of get used to the facility, get used to the balls. Um, and this dude Chris is just in there in his jersey, in a full sweat, stretching his back already. And I was like, man, this is why this dude is lasting no. so long, man. That's that's out of necessity, man. Like once you, you, you know how it is, man. Like once you, uh, something sets you back, you want to do anything you can to like prevent that from happening again. So I had like some back injuries, man. So like, I, I just it's out of necessity. If I if I don't like warm up and do, and do the proper stretching, I'm just more at risk. So that's yeah. why you see, I don't want to be like I don't want to be there three hours early. But it's kind of like I got to try to get there as early as I can. To, yeah, right, yeah. man. Definitely, man. All right, so let's – uh, we got about, like, nine minutes left. Let's talk about um, – this has been a great talk, man. Again, I appreciate you coming on so much. And, appreciate you know, you, man. There's, there's there's so many players, like, in and out of this right now, but I, I know, like, a lot of players don't watch live. They watch after. So, you know, hopefully they, they just absorb all this knowledge, man, because you got a lot of great stories, bro. Um, man, you, you got an inspirational story, and this is – I, I appreciate this. Like you, you're doing this with players to get back to guys. Definitely. Um, so let's talk about the ABL because obviously, like that's a big part of your career. Um, your first championship, you know, what was that like? Your first championship season in the ABL. Um, man, it was like it was super rewarding because prior to that season, like I had like overcame like a. a like crazy back injury. I was like, this is something I forgot to mention, but like Randy Foy, it's like my, one of my best friends, man. Like in between all of those stops, like he will always have my back. He was like, if I ain't have nowhere to go, like that was another reason why I was able to continue to to like play is because like Randy Foy was like, hey, you can come like live with me and work out. Like you can come stay with me and my family. So like that was like something. That real family, was, man. That's awesome. So like. If without without that man, that would have that would have set me back. But he was just like so. Before that season, winning the championship, um, I had got like this this Regenicon. It's like a stem cell type of therapy that, that I had got injected into my back because I was I thought I was gonna be done. Um, but that kind of helped mm -hmm. speed up the process. And then I came back and, and me and me and Steve and uh, Patrick Cabahug and, and Jared Kenyatta teamed up. And people thought that me and Steve wasn't going to be able to play together because we were, like, prior to the season before, we was, like, almost about to come to blows in certain games. And uh, I, I don't stand a chance against that dude, but I was acting like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Twin Towers, man, unstoppable. But, but, but yeah, man, we uh, we had an awesome team with, like, good chemistry, man. And um, it was just it was just dope to, to, to finally get – like, I had won championships in Syria, but for the ABL – what that league had meant to me and then the story and everything and going through it with guys like Steve Thomas is great. One of the greatest teammates I ever had. Um, the locals were really great, man. We just had like balance and chemistry, man. Just looking back on that. And we were going against like Malaysia and they had like four like Americans basically. So we felt like we was underdogs. So that just was like a super uh, special moment, man. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Um, so, You've played in the ABL for a while now. Obviously, the import rule has changed to where it used to be you could have two world imports and two, like, Asian heritage players. Uh, now it's no heritage and only three imports. What do you feel like the differences are? And, you know, which do you feel like is more competitive? Um, it's definitely more competitive now adding those three, those three Americans, man. I think um, just the level of play, like – before, if you get by one import, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's different now. You got a, it's the, the higher level. It's, it's more teams from different countries. Um, it's just it's just a lot. It's, the, the locals have gotten better from different, from uh, every country, man. 
China's mm -hmm. joined in, Taiwan. So it's definitely like just gotten more competitive over the years, just off of the fact that you know players are getting better and and it's more imports. But I think uh, before, I think before it was uh, the thing that I think because it was more locals being able to play, they were getting more development. You know what I mean? And you can see it in guys like. Um, uh, Delvin Go from Singapore, like he was playing the ABL since he was like 17, like getting mm -hmm. minutes, getting opportunity to play. And now he's able to like be out there and really contribute and be a big time player, man. So I think that was one of the like things that maybe um, is different is that back then they were getting lo more locals in the like smaller countries were getting more opportunities to, to actually play more. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like um, with more Americans on the floor, what is what is the fan base like? Is it still supportive, or do you feel like they're shying away now because, you know, it's less shine for the locals? That's like a, that's a good a good point. I think in certain countries, man, they want to see like they want to see their locals a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. But in some places, they just they just want to win with whatever whatever it takes, man. So, yeah, you so you you played around for a while now. You've probably played in countries where you know, imports have to split the minutes. Um, just talk about the – talk about how, you know, just the difference of being able to play a whole 40, 48-minute game um, compared to splitting minutes. Because this year it was kind of a struggle. Like, it was my first year having to split minutes. So, you know, some games you come out hot, but you got to get subbed where, you know, right. Tyler or ABL, you could just keep going and go crazy. Yeah, man. When you – yeah, man. Um that was an endo, right? When the the, the mm -hmm. different rules, just like I think, just like having the freedom to just play a full game, like you said, where you could just go and you are allowed to make mistakes and you could just play through the thing. You know, you're gonna get other possessions. That really helps as far as it's like for your future jobs, like statistically. Mm -hmm. um, so some some places they don't know that you're like, oh, this dude play half a game, and uh, that's why his numbers are down a little bit. I mean, you got to get into your groove a little bit more uh, quick, quickly, like you said. Um, but I think it's, it's – obviously, everybody want to play 40 minutes. But... Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, can you still hear like, me? For you still there? Gigs, for shoot future oh, jobs. There we go. That boost that, – that that Bangkok Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> tripping a little – nah, you're good, though. Uh, we just got a couple minutes left. Let's just go through a couple questions about, like, the countries you've played. Uh just like kind of rapid fire. Um, what's your favorite country that you've played in? Uh, it's not going to be that rapid. Hold on, let me think. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> you have a top three. Man. Different, different ones for different reasons, man. Like, and it, it depends on like where I was at at that point in my life. Like Thailand is my favorite, like overall, but Singapore was really special to me, man. Um, just the, the culture there, the basketball culture with the, with the organization and the, and the city is really clean and, and safe. But uh, Th Thailand is probably my top place. Vietnam is up there, man. It's, it's Thailand, similar man. in a lot of ways, man. Um, I got a lot of friends. And, and, and uh, shout out to Justin Parks again. Um, that's the, that's another place that's really underrated in the region. Um, I say like I say like Thailand, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. and Okay. That was not a quick answer, but we'll take it, man. <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, what, is, what is the country with the best food? Oh, man. I feel like I'm going to upset some people with some of these, <laughs> these answers, man. Uh, uh, like a lot of countries got, have great food, but personally, like, what's your favorite? Personally, man, I like uh, Thailand, man. Like the Thai food, Thailand. the spices, just into the flavor. Yeah, you like pad thai. What about you? Man? That. What, what's your favorite? One? Yeah, pad thai is good. Uh, I mean Philippines, just because it's so westernized, you know, you can, you can get just a variety. Man, of food. you get that home, man. I know, I know, but I'm saying, like, if you want Greek food one night, you want American food, okay. like, you want Thai yeah. food, like, I feel like when I was in Indonesia, the only American spot was McDonald's, so you know, <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> Um, what do you feel like your favorite place to live, like outside of basketball, just explore and have fun? Uh, it's a tie between like uh, Thailand and Vietnam, but I will okay. say this: like 
if I, I, I'm sorry. If I would say this, like <laughs> as far as like if I had kids, mm -hmm. like if, like like Singapore, Singapore. But yeah. Okay. To the cleanest, yeah. Worst traffic. We got like thirty seconds. Worst traffic. Rapid fire. Uh, Philippines. The Edsas. You see, you know what it is, man. Yes, sir. Uh, nicest people. Uh, oh, nicest people. Um, man, f for basketball players, the Philippines, like to me, they show the love. Even like in the hoods, like you know, what I mean, people used to tell yeah. me, "Be careful, like Philippines." Definitely, man. Definitely, bro. Hey, before we get cut off, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on, man. Thank you for sharing your wisdom.